Getting into this week's message, we're going to be in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 this morning. As I had mentioned, I had talked with the board as I was praying about uh, this year and, and what God has for us this year and, and what is the nice strategic plan that we're going to have for the 2020. The Lord said this, he said, walk by faith. I said, no, that's, that's tough. Walk by faith. Second Corinthians chapter 5 says, walk by faith and not by sight. Not by the scenes that we can see, not by the circumstances that are around us, not by what we can control, but walk by faith and not by sight. As I alluded to just a moment ago, right, it, it, I was examining this a little bit this week again, that if a child grows up in a stable home, they are less likely to have fear-based reactions to adverse situations. All right, so when there's when in the home when they have a home that is consistent, every day mom and dad come home. Every 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 night we have food. Every bedtime it's the same. When there's routine in their life, when they can when the parent says something and, and it comes through. When they're in those kind of when they're in that kind of stable environment, it lowers their fear-based reaction to diverse situations. You guys have all met those kids, or maybe seen them, right? Those kids that have no fear. Running through the playground, jumping off of things, right? They're, they're full of joy, they're full of laughter, they, they're, they're enjoying life, they're, there's peace in their heart. They don't, have a, they don't have a care in their work, in their world, right? When their expectations and needs are regularly met, there's no reason for them to believe that they won't be taken care of. It has been a fun thing to see a transition happening as, as more and more consistency is built in our son's life to see him become less and less worried about what's going to happen or less, less and less concerned about how things are going to fall in order, but to trust that hey, everything in life, it, it's okay. Things are being, my needs are being met and my expectations are always being met. Uh, this is a, sometimes a humbling thing as a parent thinking about like, okay, the words that I say to him that I want to fulfill them, I've already realized how if I, even a simple thing like me telling him, hey, this afternoon we're going to go get our haircuts, and because they didn't have appointments to get our haircuts, uh, I wouldn't get a haircut, and how that affects him, and like messes with them, and says, oh wow, Dad, do next time I tell him, hey, we're going to have a haircut, he questions. Are you sure? You know, like he'll make he'll make like three other plans for that afternoon because he knows, hey, maybe maybe we are going to get our hair cut, and and so I'm, I'm learning even as a parent how how important it is to create an environment where I consistently keep my word. It establishes within him security. Today, as we examine Second Corinthians and we we talk about these steps of faith that we're going to take as a church, that, that God is challenging you to take as individuals, and it's going to be important that we understand uh, who God is. That God is, as we sang this morning, a very good Father. Amen. Who's totally different than any earthly father. And even if we go around the room and to share how, how great our, our parental role models were in our life, or maybe some faults that they had, no matter how great they are, they still don't compare to the goodness of who God is. One point about who God is is He is consistent. He keeps His word. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about taking steps of faith. We've got to come to a belief in our hearts. We've got to maybe even repent in our hearts for not believing that God always keeps his word. Isaiah chapter 55 verse 11, it says this, My word that goes forth from my mouth shall not return to me void. It will, or it shall, accomplish what, what, what I please. When Jesus, when the Father, when God speaks a word, it will always produce what he says it will. Amen. 
it will always go forth and accomplish its purpose. That's why it's so, it's so awesome uh, to have, I don't know, his time and his word, but, you know, meditating on the promises of God. Sometimes you, you get those little daily promises. See, everybody have one of those? On your desktop, you have a little desktop, and you have like 365 cards, and on each one is like a promise of God. Why, why is it so important? Why do people take time to, to memorize his promises? Because you can go to the bank on his word. That's what Isaiah 55 is, is emphasizing this morning. It's saying, hey, you can trust my word. When I speak something, it's going to come to fruition. It's going to come to accomplish everything that I said it would. Amen. As a parent, I'm like, oh, Lord, help me. <laughs> help me to live like you. Just help me to speak like you, right? That my word can always match your word, that it always accomplishes. God is a father who always keeps his word. Sometimes I need to, I need to repent because I need to believe on that. And maybe you're in the room, even, even hearing that truth. God is a father who always keeps his word. You're thinking now of the time that your father has spoken to you. And as I examined myself and as I was preparing for this message, I was thinking about different times where, where I heard a word from my father, a, a promise from my earthly father, and it wasn't included. And it opened up sometimes a little bit of wounds in my life, a little bit of mess in my life. Uh, and, and for some reason, somehow, I have often thought about God in the same way that Father, you may not keep your word and the memories and the hurts from the things that I've experienced with my earthly father all of a sudden I, I, I have some doubt about God and whether he's going to keep his word to me. The truth this morning that the Lord would want you to believe that maybe even repent Father, forgive me for not believing that, that you're one that speaks and you always Accomplish what you speak. That's right. Numbers chapter 23, verse 19 encourages me. God is not a man that he should lie, right. or a son of man that he should change his mind. Mm -hmm. Those are healing words to me. Yeah. I, I hope they're healing words to you this morning. God is not a man. He, he doesn't lie. He, he's not a son of man. He's not, he's not just like us where he can change his mind. Oh, sorry, it's not the right time of day. Or, oh, sorry, this came up. No, he doesn't change his mind. When he speaks something to us, when he gives us a promise, when he says who he is, it never changes. God, the Father, his promises are always yes and amen. They always accomplish what he sets them out to do. Amen. You can hang your hat on it, right? You can build your life on them, right? You can live them out full of courage, knowing that they will always come true. They are a rock that you can stand on in the biggest storm, in the hardest situation. You can look at the promises of God and say, yes. Amen. This is true. It's going to accomplish its purpose. Knowing he has never gone back on his promises. Amen. On this, when I talk about, hey, we're going to start taking steps of faith. We're going to be like Peter, and he's going to tell us, hey, go ahead. I'm going to call you out. You're going to get out of the water. And even though Peter knew a thousand times before, everything that had gone up on the water has sank. He's going to say, all right, he's calling me out. I know that he, that he is who he says he is. I know that his promises are true. I know that his word always accomplishes his purpose. All right, Jesus, you call me out. I'm stepping out, right? And this is the life that God is calling us to as individuals. This is the, the mode of church that God is calling us to, that when he says something, we're going to be willing to take the step of faith. Amen. Say, God, whatever you've said, I know that you can accomplish. Amen. The message for 2020, three weeks in, walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. People, children of God, 
who trust their Father at His word and live courageously because of their faith. We are going to be people who trust Him at His word and live courageously because of our faith. Look, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 this morning. You have your paper Bible, digital Bible. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, we're going to look at verse 1 through 10. Over and over again, as I looked at this passage, I thought, man, I could just start reading just the book of Corinthians, 2 Corinthians to us, and we'll just meditate on that all day long. Uh, I want to encourage you, again, to be people of his word. To be a people who are in His Word regularly, reading the reading those passages that you don't often read, as well as the ones that you know you really like. Second Corinthians, start reading it. Yes. Second Corinthians chapter five, verse one. For we know that if the tent that is our earthly home is destroyed, we have a building from God. A house not made with hands eternal in heaven. For in this tent we groan, longing to be put on our heavenly dwelling. If indeed, by putting it on, we may not be found naked. For while we were still in this tent, we groan, being burdened. Not that we would be unclothed, but that we would be further clothed so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. Yes. He who hath prepared us this very thing is God, who has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. So, in verse 6, So, because He has given us this guarantee, because He has prepared for us a dwelling not made by human hands, because there is a, a place that is to come, because we have this promise, verse 6, we are always, let me say that, always, 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 Because we have a heavenly place, a dwelling place that's been secured for us, because there's a there's a home that's been built for us, because, man, sometimes I'm groaning in this life and it's miserable and there's stuff going on, and there's a but there's a there's a promise for me, because there's a promise for me. I always have good courage. And we know that while we're at home in the body, we're away from the Lord. <laughs> so we walk by faith and not by sight. Because we, because we know that we're away from the Lord, there's something that He's prepared for us. We're away from it. So all of a sudden, we're going to walk by faith and not by sight. We're not going to walk by what we see. We're not. We're going to get into this. Verse eight. It repeats it again. Yes. We are of good courage. And we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or we are away, we make it our aim to please Him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each one may receive what is due for what he has done in the body, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Lord, help us to be a people who take you at your word. Who trust in what you say. I love this here. It's, it's talking about believers. It, 
is, is talking about um, Paul and his, and his journey. And he's, uh, if you read all of the Second Corinthians, it's talking about his journey. He's going to different places. He's declaring the gospel. He's living out the gospel in front of people. And and, and you would think, you know, maybe we have this fantasy uh, idea of, of the Bible and, and that everything was hunky dory and, and great. Uh, if you look at all of Paul's life, you find out it, it's not hunky dory. It's not great for all of the all of the believers and all those who follow after Jesus, right? There's there's persecution, there's turmoil, there, there's tough things that are happening. And and as Paul is declaring in the earlier chapters of Second Corinthians, he's declaring, yeah, this is what we do, this, this is how we're living it, and yeah, we, we have nothing for it, and yeah, there's, there's people that hate us because of it. He brings up this point. He, remind, he reminds the believers of this promise. He's like, in the face of everything, in the face of opposition, in the face of all the extra, uh, in the face of the, 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 the moaning and the groaning, in the, in the face of life and the difficulties that there are, and in the face of people not liking you, in the face of the government being against you, in the, in the face of all these things, remember this promise. Remember this promise. Remember this word from God that, that is true. It accomplishes its purpose. It goes forth and it, it never returns to him void. Remember this thing that is, is your security, is your big shot, is your solid rock, is the thing that you can hold on to. There's a place for you. There's a place of eternity where you will be united in heaven with the Father, where all good things will be, and all good things will flow, and there will be no more suffering, and there will be no more pain, and there will be no more uh, need for healings, and there will be no need, and no, there will be no suffering, no nothing. It will all <laughs> be like we dream, and there's a place, and it's promised to us. Whenever there's a promise that is written, whether it be in that little desktop thing that you go through, whether you're reading through your, your, uh, your scripture, when, whenever God makes a promise or, or speaks a promise, we find a, a, a promise of God in scripture, I want to encourage you to ask this question. How does this promise change the way I live? If this promise is true, what effect does it have on my life, the way I live? I think that as we ask that question, and we're going to ask that question, of course, of this promise today, if there is a promise of a heavenly dwelling, how then shall we live? What should be true of us? What should be true of us as individuals? What should be true of us as a family? What should be true of us as a church? And I believe, as Scripture has pointed out, we'll see here, it will require us to be people who walk by faith and not by sight, who live courageously, who take risks for the kingdom, who do good at any cost. Why? Because we have a promise. Uh, there's an eternity secure. There's a hope that I have that's never going to fade away. That can't be taken away from me. Why? Because I have put my faith in Jesus. And I've taken him at his word. We have a promise. Remember, uh, let's look here again. Verse 1 and 2. For we know that if the tent that is our earthly home is destroyed... We have a building from God, a house not made by hands, eternal in heaven. For in this tent we groan, longing to be put on our heavenly dwelling. Paul encouraging the believers at the time. Yeah, there's things in our lives and in our situations that cause us to groan. 
There's things that aren't right. There's injustices that we see in our life. Man, there, there, there's persecution. Maybe we haven't quite felt that. Maybe there, there's odd looks. There, there, there's ways that we've been slighted. There's all sorts of things in our life that cause us to groan. Man, there's sickness in our life that causes us to groan. I, I've been praying with Jackie Lewis for a long time that God would heal and get rid of every uh, sickness, pain, brokenness in their bodies, right? And so uh, in this earthly flesh body that we live in, there's groan. That's why we'll talk a little bit later when Jesus teaches us to pray and says, hey, Pray that it would be on uh, in heaven as it is on earth, right? Yes. I'm looking forward to, to sharing those insights on, on prayer. But but in in our earthly body, we we got stuff, we got life. Particularly speaking to the church in Corinth, man, you got persecution. You got people that hate you, that want to kill you for what you believe and how you're living. The promise is, though, that with all the trouble, with all the persecution, with all the groaning, there is a place that's being prepared for us by, not by human hands. Not something that we've built for ourselves. Not something that we've accomplished on our own. No, there's a place that's prepared for us that Jesus himself has purchased for us to go and live. And now he's there preparing a place for you and I, those that have put our faith in Jesus Christ, he is securing a place. I don't know what it's going to look like. I don't know what glorified body Andrew will look like or glorified Linda. I don't know what a glorified body for Linda will look like, but you know, I think I think it's going to be better than what we have. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be it's going to be a little it's going to, it's going to be a little bit more whole and. Getting up and down on my, you guys know I had knee surgery. Getting up and yeah. down this morning on my knee, you know. I'm looking forward to it. God, whatever you got for me, I know it's, I know it's, got, it's, it's, it's better than what I have. Verse four says, "For while we are still in this tent, we groan, being burdened, not that we would be unclothed, but that we would be further clothed." God is not, God is God is not a God of death and destruction. And if you're here this morning and year 2020 is, is, is you are you're looking forward, year 2020 is going to change, it's going to be different, there's going to be some burdens that are going to lift off my, my shoulder. You you're you got high hopes, and all of a sudden you got to 2020, you realize you're still you, you're still in the same house, you're still in the same situation, and never nothing ever changed. I mean, we put our hopes in sometimes in, in things that, that, that and they don't come through. We're still, we're still growing. The hope here is not for death. Okay. Right. We don't groan for death. We don't long for death. That's what it's saying. Let me, let me read that again to you. Let me, I'm being a little, little pastoral. Let me just take this moment here. Verse 4. While we're still in this tent, we groan, being burdened. Not that we would be unclothed. So unclothed in this moment. It's, it's not that we would, we would long for death. I don't know what uh, is for a moment. And if you're dealing with a spirit of death, that that's your hope, that, that, would, that ending life would be something that would get you a new situation. The Lord would say to you this morning, He desires life for you. Amen. And if you're suffering with something that's causing you to have thoughts about death, I want to pray with you yeah. that God would deliver you. Yes. Because here the, the scripture, is that the hope is not for death. It's not that this life would end. Right? But that we would be further clothed. So the hope is not that breath would end, but that I would be united with Him. In eternity. The hope in Christ is always for life. He came to give life and give it more abundantly. And so if you're experiencing something that doesn't look like life, the Lord wants to deliver you. And it's possible through the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Okay? Yeah. 
Our hope is in the eternal dwelling, life eternal, hope in heaven, clothed in his glory, not absent from our present situations. He has victory for you, and I believe that with all my heart. We groan in this place because we know that there is better to be with God. We know God has more for us. And so we groan with this expectation that his promises are going to come true, but yet we're not yet experiencing them. And so we move as a people in faith, walking towards with that hope that one day we'll be clothed in heaven, but knowing right now he has a purpose for me. Right now, he has a hope for me. Right now, he has something to do. Yes. Let's take a moment to pray. Okay. Um, everybody bow your heads for a moment. Everybody bow your heads for a moment. If you are in the room, if you're in the room this morning and you say, Pastor, I'm dealing with some hopelessness. I'm dealing with some thoughts about that death would be, would be better than life. This morning, I'm, I'm the only one looking. So you're just admitting it to me. I'm, I want to pray for you this morning because God has come to bring life to you. He wants to free you from those thoughts. He wants to free you from that burden. He wants to free you from that groaning. And yes, we have a hope that one day we'll be with him, but right now he wants to do it for somebody in this room. So if you're in this room, you say, yeah, Pastor, I've been, I've been dealing with some death thoughts, some hopeless thoughts. If that's you, I want you to raise your hand. And you're, you're just admitting it to me so I can pray for you. And I see that hand. I want to pause you for a little bit longer. If that's you, just raise your hand. I want to pray for deliverance for you. Father, I thank you that in Jesus we have life and life more abundantly. Father, I come against the lies of the enemy that would only want to bring death and destruction. Yes. Father, I speak life in the name of Jesus into these individuals that confess in this moment I have a weakness, I have a temptation. There's a voice of the enemy torturing me about death. Father, I thank you that now you have a purpose for them. Now is your purpose for life in them. And so, Jesus, we thank you that by your blood, we are healed and set free. Yes. And so, God, I pray in the name of Jesus, you would bring victory into these individuals right now. Jesus, that you would come and be their victor, where you would be their defense, you would be their, their voice, and God, you would set them free now from any scheme of the enemy, any desire of the enemy in their life. Father, I thank you that we have a hope in you, we have a faith in you that is secure, eternal, and it's not that we would die, but that we would live eternally. So God, I speak life into their souls right now in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Lord, for victory over all things that the enemy had planned. Father, whatever the enemy had planned, God, I pray you would turn around for good in the name of Jesus. And Lord, that nothing would hinder your victory in their lives. God, we thank you that today marks a new day. A new day of life, a new day of victory. And Lord, I pray grace on them to walk these things out in you. Yes. In Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. Yes. And I believe Amen. the word of God says that we can we can confess things, we confess things not so that we can feel condemned, not that we are torn down.
but it says we confess so that we can be prayed for and we can find healing. Amen. Amen. Yes. Don't ever be afraid to come to the altar. Don't be afraid to lift your hand up. Don't be afraid to confess, yeah, I got something wrong with me because the exact thing, that moment that we confess, it's a moment where we step out of the darkness, step out of the, the burden, step out of the weight, and, and then God brings healing power to us. Amen. Confession is a good thing. Amen. Don't feel shame. Don't let the enemy put <clears throat> shame on you for confessing. I got a problem. I got something in my life that doesn't look like Jesus. Because God wants us to confess these things Amen. that we can find healing. Amen? Amen. So not only do we have this promise, this promise that is life eternal, this dwelling place for us, this, this promise that we'll be united with Him forever, we have not only this from His word, from His mouth, but it says here in Scripture we have the guarantee of his of his spirit. He who has prepared us for this very verse five. He who has prepared us for this very thing is God Himself. Our Father wants to be with us. I'm just going to undo a whole bunch of lies this morning. Our Father wants to be with us. Yes. Amen. Yeah. I don't know what you've experienced. Sometimes I've experienced, my Father don't really want to be with me in this moment. But our Heavenly Father, He is preparing this with you in mind. With me in mind. He wants me to be with Him. He wants me to dwell with Him. Well, some of us have to repent for that. Lord, help me, help me to believe. Help, Father, forgive me for not believing. You really want me with you. He wants it. Who is the one that's prepared it for us? It's God Himself. He's ready. He's waiting. Man, I can't wait till you come home. I, I want to be. I can't wait to share with you what it's like to be in my presence, where everything is made new. Where, there, where there's perfect peace, where fear doesn't exist, where pain is no longer. I, I can't wait. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a little taste of it. Man, I could just preach just on this. Come on. Yes. <laughs> Somebody get this. Oh. You know, sometimes I just want to like just sit down and just sit here for like hours. Isn't it? Just you know, sitting here for hours. I know in the American church we can't, you know, got lunch. I made an appointment in Milwaukee at two o'clock, so I gotta get to Milwaukee by two. Um, all day long. We'll just start service times at eight. You know what I mean? We just start at eight. We just go to four. All day. Get some food in here. Catering in. <laughs> There's so much in these, there's so much in the scriptures. I'm just, I'm just like, as I'm thinking, as I'm praying right here, I just told somebody, hey, in a couple weeks we're going to be back in Matthew, and I'm like, there's just like so much. It's one verse. Verse 5. He has prepared for us this very thing. It's God himself. He wants to be with us. He wants to be with you. Get that inside of us. He wants to be with you. He's prepared it for us. And he has given us the Spirit as a guarantee, yeah. as a down payment. You want to know what it's like to, to be in heaven, to be united with God? Man, get connected with the Spirit as a guarantee, the Spirit as a down payment, as a, as a Spirit as, as a taste of what it's like to be with God forever. It's the Spirit. If you want to know what it's like to be in be in heaven, man, get more of the Spirit of God. Yeah. Man, all those, all those wonderful gifts, if, you, if you're familiar, there's, there's lists of, of gifts of the Spirit. You want to see all those things, you want to know what all those things are like. And we have a down positive, a guarantee, the Spirit inside of us, of what life is going to be like eternal with God the Father. We need to be people of how many how many think we gotta be you guys 
making a list of what I've all said today. All right, we've got to be people of faith. We've got to be people who trust His Word. We've got to be people of His Spirit. There's just so much that God wants to ask for us. Yes. If you're just going through life, work, get up, go to work, go to bed. Maybe I read my Bible on Wednesdays because I go to group. Or, or maybe I, I open my word on Sundays because I'm, I'm here. And maybe I did. I pray because I pray over my meals every day. There's so much more that the Lord has for us that He's given us because the Spirit has been deposited in each one of us. So, what's our response? To all these good things, all these things, Pastor, you just, you just jump into them. It's like, yeah, there's a whole bunch of things to be excited about. There's an eternal dwelling. There's a deposit of the Spirit. Man, God wants us. He loves us. He's for us. He always says things. Whenever He says things, He always is consistent. It always comes to pass. He never lies. He's not like me. He's not like you. He doesn't change His mind. So what do we do? What's our response? How do we live? Verse 6, we are always of good courage. Yeah. Yeah. Remember that picture of the little kid in a the, in the safe home, right, where, where there's consistency all the time, and they know what to expect, and all of their expectations are met, and all of their, their needs are met, and all of a sudden they're just a kid, they're just a stable kid, they, just, they have no fear, they go for it, they, they play on the playground, they run home, they know their mom's going to be there, they know the hot meal's going to be there, they know this is going to happen, they know, and they just feel secure. Because of all these truths we just read, one through, verse 1 through 5, now we can be just like that, we're always of good courage. Man, there's nothing in this world. So, so what is Paul saying to the, the church in Corinth? Man, in persecution? It's alright. You're always of good courage. You have a promise. You have a guarantee. You have a Father who always keeps His word. It's a guarantee on your life. There's a heavenly dwelling place. So what can man do to you? Be of good courage. Just follow after Jesus. Go for it. Step out in faith. Walk like he's asked you to walk. Yeah. Do what he's asked you to do. Go for it. Always be of good courage because there's a guarantee. It can't be taken away. There's a dwelling place for you. So no matter what this life puts at you, no matter what this life uh, burden you carry, no matter what's going on, be of good courage. Keep on going. Do what God asks you to do. Take those steps of faith. Respond to Him. Do what He's asked you to do because no matter how great the risk is, it can't take away your eternal promise. Dwelling place. Amen. Be of good courage. Always. Because we know this, while we're at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. No matter if I die, it's okay. Because I'd rather be with Him than where I currently am. That's right. And so I'm going to take those steps of courage. I'm going to do exactly what he's asked me to do. I'm going to witness to that individual. I'm going to invite that person to church. I'm going to do that good work. I'm going to show up on Thursday at 6 o'clock on the 30th so that I can organize some cans and interact with the, with the, the school administration. Why? Because I, I'm of good courage. No matter what they think about me, no matter what they do to me, and come on, in America, we ain't really facing a lot of death issues for what we believe in. But let's go. So we're going to go with good courage. We're going to do the work. Why? Because we know if anything does happen to me, this is what, this is what Paul said. If anything does happen to me, I want to be better for it. Amen. We know that when we're at home in the body, we're away from the Lord. So what does that mean? I want to take the risk. I want to live with courage because I know that if something happens to my physical body, if I'm in need, if I do have to take my last breath because I was courageous, 
Well, I just enter into the dwelling place that he has for me. I encourage you to ask the questions whenever you approach a promise of God. If this is true, how then should I live? If it's true, I have an eternal dwelling place that, that I'm already guaranteed, that I have prepared for me, then what does courageous living look like? What does, let's continue here, walking by faith and not by sight look like? God, you ask me to do it? All right, I want to do it. I want to step out. All right, God, you revealed this, this plan, this, this good thing to do. You, you revealed what you want me to do. I thought, I don't, all right, I want to, I want to step out. I want to take this step. I want to, I want to do it. Why? Because I want to live courageously. I, man, I, I see my, my neighbor who is in need. I, all right, I want to do that good work. I want to do it. All right, I, I know there's somebody in, in my neighborhood that, that needs Jesus. Okay, I want, to, I want to have this discussion with them about Jesus. I, I'm going to do it. I mean, I'm going to be courageous. And what can they do to me? All right, I, I know somebody who needs healing. All right, I'm going to, I'm going to invite them to church. I'm, I'm going to pray for them. I'm going to invite my friend over. We're going to pray for their body so they can be healed. Why? Because what could they do to me? I, I, everything's secure, right? I mean, hey, I'm going to... I'm going to start giving outside of what I thought I, I could afford. I'm, I'm going to start tithing and be obedient to God. Why? Because, I mean, what, what, could, it, what could it hurt me? Um, if I lose everything, Amen. I got everything. Right. I'm, going to, I'm going to start being courageous, right? Uh, hey, what if there's somebody that really already hates me and has rejected me multiple times about coming to church with me? You know what? I'm just going to ask them again because what could they do for me? Or what, what can they do to me? I, I'm just going to be courageous. Hey, there's needs in the church. There's a parking lot that needs to be plowed every week that it snows, right? Hey, I want to be creative. I want to take up some extra time. I want to plow the parking lot. Hey, there's some, there's some ministry that needs to be done. There's some kids that need ministering to. There's a nursery that's empty right now. You know what? God, if you want me to do it, God, hey, what's going to do for me? What, what, what harm is it going to do, right? There's, there's a security that's there for me. Hey, uh, pastor's going to call me up on a Friday to speak on Sunday. Hey, I can do it. I'm going to be courageous. I'm going to step out. I'm going to speak because, hey, what harm could it do? My future is secure. Man, I didn't even get you. Hey, God's going to tell me to move into a neighborhood where I know I don't belong, where it doesn't look good, where there's reports of crime on a regular basis, and guess what? I'm going to be courageous. I'm going to go ahead and go. Because what? What could it do to me? This is the kind of things Paul's talking about. When he's talking to the Corinthian church, he's not just saying, hey, you know, go bake a cake for your neighbor. Go bring a pie to your next-door neighbor and knock on their door. And that wasn't what Paul was talking about at all. He's saying, hey, Corinthian church, there's people out there that want to kill you. <laughs> yeah. They're going to torture you because of what you believe. But you know what? You've got a heavenly going place. So be of good courage always and walk by faith and not by sight. You know what's challenged me recently? I've been talking to you a little bit about our, our missionary friends that are uh, overseas in the Middle East in a closed country. You guys uh, that are here may know what country they're in, where they recently had some, uh, some chaos on the national news. It just so happened that uh, before any of it was known, they had a they had a planned regional training in another country. So they were not in, in, at home when all of the chaos happened in their country. And she posted on Facebook. She said, uh, hey, there's a lot of you guys that have been sending messages, making sure we're okay. Uh, people were asking her, you know, where we were. Hey, we're praying for you. She was really encouraged by all the, all the messages of people that are praying. She said this, she said, this is how you guys can pray for us. Pray for wisdom on when to return. 
this is the this is the kicker that I because because God has not called us to a mission of safety. That's right. Mm. You know, me and me knocking on my neighbor's door in my apartment complex, I don't think about oh, whether this is a safe thing to do or not, right? Like, but they're saying, hey, we're sitting, we're, uh, it's a, a couple, and they have four young kids in elementary school, and they're saying, hey, don't, don't pray for us that, you know, it's perfect peace, or, or don't, don't ask us, like, if we're going to go back. It's, it's only a matter of when, because God has not called us to a mission of safety. He's called us to a mission of the gospel. Verse 6. Because of this great promise that our eternity is secure, verse 6, we are always of good courage. And we walk by faith and not by sight. I'm going to take a moment together to reflect on this. What is God's word for us as a church in 2020? Take some risks. Be courageous. Step out in faith. Trust me. Take me at my word. Do you guys join me? I'll answer just like I answered last week when I met with the advisory board. I don't know. I don't know exactly what it will be. I don't know exactly what it will cost. But I know, like I said, take some steps of faith and trust me. Walk by faith, not by sight. Dedicate 10% of your budget, even though last year that number didn't even match what they were going to give to missions. Man, plan some outreaches. Get involved in the community. Do some things. I'll get to the rest of the verses next week. God has good things for us to do. Now he's just asking and looking for our people that are willing to step out of faith. To walk in faith, to be courageous. If that's you this morning, you say, yeah, Pastor, you know what? I'm ready. I'm ready to walk this out in, in, in faith. I'm ready to be courageous. Yeah, Pastor, just like you. I don't, I don't really know exactly what that means yet. But, but I'm willing to take Jesus at his word, and I'm willing to start walking these things out in faith. If that's you this morning, I want to invite you to stand.